after labelling some opponents of gender reforms as bigoted. She also claims that her government has nothing to apologise for amid growing controversy surrounding the housing of transgender, transgender prisoners. Now, despite Nicola Sturgeon's comments, uh, which were made during an interview yesterday, she said that trans prisoners will be treated differently. Now, some felt that exposed a fundamental incoherence mm -hmm. in her position on the subject. It was something that was exposed via very polite but extremely persistent questioner. Just have a look at this. My question is, are all trans Look, women women? That's not the point that we're dealing with that's here. That's the question I'm asking. Trans women are, are women, but in the prison context, there is no automatic right for a trans so woman. So there are contexts where a trans woman is not a woman? No, there is... <laughs> there is circumstances in which a trans woman uh, will be housed in the male prison estate. Is there any the context in which a woman born as a woman will be housed in the male estate? Look, we're talking here about trans women. And I'm now asking about women born as women. Uh, I don't think there are circumstances there. Uh, but so it's different for trans women? Well, yes, and I, I'm not... So they're not equal? That is not... The, there is a risk assessment process done for trans women that takes account of the nature of the crime. So, so a trans woman is... is a woman, but not a woman if she has to go to jail for a sex offence? So ITV no. News Scotland correspondent Peter Smith was the reporter putting those ver very persistent questions. And, Peter, it's such a sensitive issue, but you pursued with this what is to many people the absolutely vital line and i think it would interest trans women as mm. well as um everybody you know everybody which is at what point does nicola sturgeon stop considering trans women women and it seems to be as she answered to you as richard just said the point at which they're convicted of a crime and imprisoned what did you th make of what she said? I think that this exposes that Nicola Sturgeon has got herself in a tangle about this. And I, it is important, Susanna, that you'd said that this is of interest to both sides of this debate, because while untangling the argument and seeing Nicola Sturgeon uh, wrong-footed or flustered over an issue which she really should have been very confident on, because these are the fundamental questions of the trans debate, not an area that's unfamiliar to her. It's an issue which she has staked her reputation and her career on, now in a constitutional clash with Westminster over her right to make it easier and faster for people in Scotland to legally change gender. Mm. So she should be very aware of these issues. And yes, it has um, been of great interest to people who are opposed to that change in legislation, saying this exposes how poorly thought out the legislation is and how unfamiliar she, unfamiliar she is with the issue. But I think it's important to say as well that before we do these reports, we have to educate ourselves as journalists, and I'd spoken to um, trans friends, trans activists, understanding their concerns about changes to the prison policy, and they were saying, well, is Nicola Sturgeon still a trans ally? She is, again, staked her reputation on it, she stood side by side with us, but when there was public pressure, immense public pressure, following the very public scandal of um, two horrific criminals, um, a, a double rapist who had raped as a man while, um, after being convicted, had transitioned to a woman and now wants to be moved to a, a, a women's prison, Isla Bryson, and then days later, Tiffany Scott, who had stalked a teenage girl and then assaulted a nurse, assaulted a female prison officer, again, after these events, decided that to transition, now wants to self-identify as a woman who moved to a women's prison. Two high-profile uh, high public events created immense pressure on Nicola Sturgeon, and they, these trans people were saying, has she buckled under pressure? Mm. Is she now, as you said, is she putting caveats on the, the, mm. the, the trans um, mantra that all women are women? Well, in Nicola Sturgeon's eyes, if you'd asked her that question two weeks ago, I don't think she would have uh, um, been, been so easily flustered. You, you were there. We, we saw it as a piece of television in, in 2D, in two dimensions. You were there in, in reality, in 3D. What was your reading as a journalist of her... Well, what came across as, as incoherence in the face of those very straightforward questions? How do you think she was feeling as you were asking her those questions? I think that there was a realisation in her eyes and in her manner that this is an extremely complicated and emotive subject, which maybe seems obvious, but that's actually something that Scotland's First Minister has until now played down um, on the, her, her um, attempts to push through the um, gender uh, reforms in Scotland, as I say, making it easier and faster for people to change gender, lowering the legal age from 18 to 16. Mm. She has been questioned about potential controversies and played down the likelihood. And then 
it's often the case when the theory meets reality, does it stand up to scrutiny? And I guess when you can see Nicola Sturgeon, who is not, not an unintelligent person, a supremely intelligent person, a very composed uh, leader, very you, you know, very um, uh, coherent in, in interviews normally, when you can see her starting to flush there over, I say, what is actually not not a kind of niche part of the debate, but a fundamental part of it. I think that's a moment where Nicola Sturgeon is realising that this is um, this is a really complicated issue for her. It's politically sensitive, and that perhaps, perhaps, despite her saying that she doesn't need to pause and give um, more consideration to how legislation is drafted, maybe there is cause for her to take a moment of pause and take a breath and rethink how wording is is of the legislation, how the legislation is worded going forward because potentially this is going to open her up to all kinds of problems in the future. It was a masterclass in very direct questioning. It really was. When, when the interview, when the encounter was over, did she look a bit shaken up? Because she looked a bit shaken up to me watching that. Look, in absolute fairness to Nicola Sturgeon, she's not someone who hides from interviews and tough questions. I mean, True. we know well on this programme that there are previous prime ministers who have literally hid from uh, yeah. your journalists asking tough Infringes, questions. Yeah. Um, now, Nicola Sturgeon, through the years, has faced tough questions, and, and she will stand in front of the cameras and face this scrutiny. And, I, and again, yesterday was no different. And uh, But yes, afterwards, I think there was a moment where I saw that, um, that perhaps there was a little bit of... Um, that didn't go well. <laughs> ..doubt yeah. in her eyes, yes. But, yeah. she, but it's, it's so important to say she's staked her reputation on this issue. And it's a controversial issue, and, and many people would say, well, fair play to you, First Minister, you're standing by a minority group and you know, putting your whole weight of your reputation behind this. But then when you see the, the, her responses to the question, I think a lot of people are saying, do you really believe what you're saying, or do you still really believe what you're saying? Peter, thank you very much indeed for your time. Uh, as I say, it was a, a masterclass, actually, in straight news interviewing. OK, we're joined now by the Mail's Andrew Pearce yeah, and... Uh, I just Pierce want to Bar. ask, I mean, basically what Nicola Sturgeon said was there are circumstances in which we mm. will not treat trans yeah. women as mm. women. Yeah. yeah. And uh, a lot of women's rights activists who face being called transphobic... Yeah. ..would say, but that's exactly what we've been saying. That's and this what, shouldn't yeah. just apply to female-only spaces in prison. This should apply to other female-only spaces. It's what spaces. people like J.K. Rowling have been saying all along. She also said in that interview that there were tests in place it, when it came to cr trans women involved in crime. Well, those tests failed, because there's no way that man who committed two rapes and identified as a woman afterwards should have been allowed in a woman-only prison. They've admitted that because they've moved him, because he's still a man, out of the prison. She's got herself into the biggest mm. mess of her reign. She's mm. been leader for eight years now. I was saying to Kevin, she's reminding me, I adored Margaret Thatcher, but at the end of her 11 years in power, she was uh, often on the defensive, right and that's what that reminded me of, a leader who's yeah. got her back against the wall. Kevin, some people wonder if this is yeah. Nicola Sturgeon's poll tax. Yeah. It may, it may well be because she's pushed through reforms in Scotland that don't seem to be popular with the people of, of Scotland. And They're she, hugely you know, unpopular, she, Kevin. She, you, could, you can change your gender now, which is and about 30 people in Scotland do a year, which is making it simpler, uh, making it, make, you can do it quicker, and you don't need a medical intervention. Mm. But, but it, bring, it brings to the fore there's competing rights here. Now, trans, trans people are very marginalised, suffer a lot of bigotry and prejudice. Mm. But then there is the whole question of women's rights too, and particularly on an area like I would say sport, where per personally, if you can change your gender, you can't change your sex, you should play in the area of your birth sex. Then you have all these questions going on, because I don't want to mansplain it, and I feel I'm doing it now when I'm, <laughs> when I'm ch chatting with you, yeah. you know, but, but there are all those areas of, of women's spaces, whether it's refuges, changing rooms, or in prisons. Mm. And I think, I think what she needs to say, and I, because watching the case of the double rapist who raped, who raped uh, two women as a man. As a man. The only way he raped them, he could have yeah. raped them as a man. Now he says he's transitioning as a, as a, mm. as a trans woman. The truth is, I look at that case and I think, is he really a trans woman or is he, no. game, is he game in the system? Which yeah. is why it, trans women yeah. look at that yeah. case and say... He, it, we don't want it, anything it's a bad bad with that person. Or, or they gives, might well it gives, think that. It gives trans women a bad name. But the yes. other thing here is, yeah. how dare Nicola Sturgeon criticise oh, yeah. people who are concerned about this legislation that she's pushed through? Yeah. How dare she call people like me 
uh, a bigot. She said some. Homophobe. They say some. So, well, but I, some are. But some most are. people in Scotland are decent, hard-working people. Yeah. They just appall to think yeah. 16 year olds but can if change she had their to do that interview, that interview again today. Mm. I'm struggling to think how she could have answered how she'd answer those questions. I don't think she different. could have done it any other way. And then the other thing is, Richard, there was an opportunity for the Scottish government not to do this because the Tories tabled an amendment in the Scottish Parliament to exclude prisoners, which would mm. stop trans women, male who've committed crimes like rape, going into a women's prison. And the SNP and Labour that's rejected it. Yeah, that's violent offenders, particularly well, uh, offenders against women. women, because there are in, in England and Wales a system is is somewhat different on prisons. And you need the justice secretary's uh, authority to do that. But mm. they are you know, there are trans women in women's prisons. You have people who are born as their sex was men, mm. now women. Uh, in so there are there are cases here as well. But it's it's one of the, it's 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 the I think it's the area in politics which can get the very nastiest and real well, screaming on. Nasty, but no, but by calling people bigots. But there are, homophobes. Yeah, but there are outrageous. other people who. But there are people who are bigots on this issue, and they hide sometimes behind. But difficult there are also cases. legitimate questions are. to Absolutely. be asked really are. about this. And yeah. <clears throat> if you say trans women are women, until they can are convicted of a crime. And then they're not. Yeah. They're not eligible you, for a place you, in a women's prison. It's a contradiction in terms. It's a contradiction. <laughs> exactly look, right. But look, the you know. It, it because is, what are the circumstances for uh, yeah, trans right. women, not women? I, I, and both women and trans women will be and asking that and, question. And she, you don't want I, to say or in any way imply people who say they are trans women somehow. No, you're not. That's right. And you're it? a predator. Yeah. But the but the law has to cope with yes. people yeah. who may be yeah. predators. And, and it's not bigoted of Rishi Sunak, the government in Westminster, to try to block this in Scotland because he's thinking about it a UK-wide mm. issue and it yeah. impacts on equality legislation yeah. here. Okay. That's a separate issue yeah. though. Well, and, when, and whether the changes in Scotland were significant enough to trigger that. Well, speaking act of separate issues, 